Like the rocks that break the waves, Highlanders have weathered many storms. So it's time to do a proper one. Let's do right. This time, with feeling. Let's get started. So Highlander is a weird character to try to wrap around. Before, before we get into tips and tricks and anything else, the biggest thing that any any player looking to get into Highlander needs to know is the Highlander. Out of all the heroes in this game, Highlander is the only hero that cannot fight up close by default. You can't get up in somebody's face and throw attacks. Anyone else can. There's nothing you can do up close. You have to. You have to break that distance. It's very important that if you're interested in Highlander, that you understand that. Understand that there's going to be times when you can do nothing because they're in your face. If someone gets in your face, there's nothing you can do about it. It sucks. That being said, once you acknowledge that he cannot fight up close, things make more sense. And that'll actually lead us right into chains. So I'm not gonna go. I'm not gonna cover the stuff that's in like the move set. It's you can obviously read the move set and see what's in it. That's not. That's not what these are for. We're gonna cover the complicated stuff. So. You have little. You have a couple chains you can use. Your light, light, heavy. Your light, light. Part of that. Uh, your heavy, heavy, and your light, heavy. That's all your chains. There's a time to use each of those, and it's a little muddy which one you use in certain situations. Ideally, you never use them to a to directly attack a person. What I mean by that is you're not going to throw these hoping they hit. The the chains that you have as a Highlander are really they're primarily useful as predictions and counterattacks and responses. So if you go into your backstep light and someone rushes you or tries to parry what you did or tries to cut it, crush and counter strike it, each of these has something for you to do. So if someone comes in, if you do a backstep light and someone tries to crush and counter strike it, the correct response is to throw your second light because that has almost instant hyper armor and you can trade with them in response to them trying to punish you. And you can still get into your offensive and whatnot. If someone tries to parry it, the correct response would most likely be to trade with your heavy. Instead of doing the light, which you could also do, it's better to go for the heavy and get a lot of damage out of it. The other thing you can do is if someone tries to parry it, or they rush in with you, like to do a quick rushing attack like Valiant Breakthrough with Warden, is to throw the backstep light, go into offensive and dodge it, and get ready to counter it. Next part. Celtic Curse is always going to be one that I'm not, oh, I'm not happy with. I'm never really happy with Celtic Curse. There's a time and a place for it, and it's not often. Uh, Celtic Curse is a fairly slow attack. It's easy to read. It has high guard break vulnerability on startup, and it's easy to react. To. Even the fastest cancel is still very reactable by normal standards. Not it, not by pro standards, not by grandmaster standards, by normal people. I've had Rep 10 parry Celtic Curse. People new to the game, not Smurfs, just it wasn't a tricky attack. Uh, there's a lot of things with Celtic Curse. You can, you if you don't want to try to block it or parry it, you can just dodge it. You can dodge every cancel. You just keep your guard top and dodge whatever happens. You'll be fine. You can dodge attack as every character. I think the only person who has issues with it is Jean Hu because Jean Hu has weird. Dodge like the we has weird dodge frames, so sorry, John. So really easy to counter, really easy to, to counter punish, and there's only a couple heroes that have long enough dodge attacks that if they dodge attack your Celticers, you can then trade with them on the on the rebound, and it's not often, it's not consistent. So that sucks. The couple times that you should use Celticers is if you're trying to bait a dodge attack out of. Um, Anybody with a with a non faintable dodge attack, so like Shaolin, Shaman, uh, Kinsei, every hero that has a dodge attack, you can punish. If they go to just dodge out of your Celtic Curse and you flow into offensive, 
you have enough time to either parry or crush and counter strike that dodge attack. Even with the fastest ones. Even with Jean Hu's. You can definitely parry it, you can definitely crush and counter strike it. The other way you can do it is a bit more risky, but you can use it as a response to something, like a mix up. The example I'm providing is against Shaman's unblockable into guard break. If you see that happen, you can quickly go into Celtic Curse and try to counteract it that way. It's not reliable, it's not even recommended, but it's a possibility. You can throw it out while they're trying something and try to retake pressure. Try to put it back in your favor. I don't recommend doing it often, much like Kazone Option Select, it's kind of just something to, to throw in to keep people on their toes and keep them a little bit more at bay. Celtic Curse is a weird thing, are not a lot of uses for it, so we'll we'll move on from there in the next section, uh, which is offensive. Or going into it, it's because it's very important. So going into offensive, you can do it in a couple ways. You can do it by whiffing an attack, because you're not going to throw attack at somebody. You do. You can do it by backstepping attack, which is infamously known for Highlanders. Uh, backstep light's perfect. If people are really close and you want to try it, you can do a backstep heavy, but it's kind of... Meh. It's not necessarily a good idea or recommended. It's just a really slow heavy with a lot of GB vulnerability. It's not like it's gonna buy you anything. Other than that, uh, if someone's really in your face, what you can do is hold your heavy and flow into offensive manually. You don't have to go. You don't have to use an attack. You just go right into it. And if someone does try to hit you, this is gonna be. We'll get into this part in a second. But predictions are very important in Highlander. And you kind of have to, you may have to take a couple hits to figure out how they how they work individually. Some people, when they see you go into offensive, will just throw an attack to hit you back out of it. If that happens, try to be ready for it. If you have to just go into offensive manually, be ready for it to just kind of fake it, to come back out of it for a second and try to parry. You probably won't have enough time to crush and counter strike, but you might be able to parry what they're doing. Keep that in mind. You also might be able to dodge it as soon as you get into offensive, so it all depends. It's very contextual. You'll probably hear me say that word again. Island is a very contextual hero. It's, it doesn't really... He doesn't kind of exist outside of the tier lists. He's very, very weird. He's complicated. So I'm not going to cover offensive mix-ups Ideally, it's something you learned before that. Um, it's kind of too too random to kind of throw it out. There's no one size fits all for mix-ups, like with with offensive mix-ups. You kind of, it's unfortunately one of those things, one of many things with Highlander that you'll have to just get a feel for. You have you'll have to learn it. I could sit here and tell you that you could do you could do heavy into Caver Toss to catch people who would dodge the heavy. But that doesn't cover people who have fast heavies and try to parry it, or option select. Because it won't cover those people at all. It's just a bit too complex to not have its own video for it. And that's what I'm most likely going to do. So we're going to move past all that. We're going to get into measure. Measure is very, very... Um, that's a fencing term. It's measures like your distance and your placement. So... Highlander has surprisingly long range for how much he looks like he shouldn't, uh, both with his light attacks and his heavies and his offensive heavies. He has just a little bit more range than his sword has mass. So it'll look like the sword didn't hit you and you'll get hit for it. On the flip side, you could be doing a backstep light and still get deflected because <laughs> it, do it doesn't even look like it should hit him. It's a very crucial thing to remember is that you have more range than you think you do and it works both ways against you. We'll move on from that. It's very short. Just know your ranges. Learn them. Go into like a like a bot uh, training ground and you can just practice your ranges. Have them stand still. Just get, you'll have to get used to it. So counterattacks come in a couple of different ways and we covered a little bit of it earlier. Um, basically as a hunter you have to set up your own demise in order to punish them for doing it. You have to set yourself up to pseudo-fail in order to capture them with something bigger. It's like doing a backstep light. There's a lot of heroes that can punish that and are greedy for it. They want to punish you for doing it because it's easy damage. The key thing is to set it up like that. Let's say you're fighting against a gladiator. 
you know they're hungry for those deflects. They're really deflect hungry. What you can do is be a little too close and do a backstep top light, which you normally wouldn't do. And what you can do is try to bait their deflect. Like, oh no, I've fallen and I can't get up. And then as soon as they get into that deflect, hit them with a top heavy and just really take some chunk out of them. And it'll make them think twice about doing it. They'll deflect you less often, hopefully. Some heroes are immune to this. It's very contextual. Obviously, you can't do it with Berserker and Shinobi because they don't care about your hyper armor. They'll stop you. Another form of counterattack, we did cover the we covered the often the Celtic Curse one. The other one is I've seen this happen a couple times is to go for really big read trades. What I mean by that is like so if someone's starting a mix up, if they're doing something like Shigoki's Demons Embrace mix up, as soon as you see it, what you can do is just just throw a top at you. It's not smart, it's not big brained. What it is, is you're making a hard read that they're going to go into Guard Break or Demon's Embrace, because it'll catch both of those. At the worst, you'll trade evenly. If you start your Heavy as soon as the Shigoki starts charging up theirs, the worst that's going to happen is they're going to parry you, or they'll trade with you. If either of those things do not come out, you'll, you'll hit them for 45 damage on a read. And that shit's crazy. And that'll actually lead us into the next thing, which is predictions and timing. If you made it this far in the video, nice. This is where I'm going to caveat everything I'm telling you right now. I don't recommend anybody play like me. I don't want anybody out there to look look at the things I put up as Highlander and how I play and how I present myself and think like, that's how I want to play. Don't play like me. <laughs> There's a very distinct reason for that. I do not have good reactions. At all. I don't react to things well. I'm not good at reacting to zone attacks. If you want to learn Highlander and learn Highlander well, watch like Thunders, Spider Goat, Vulture, fucking like phenomenal, cr almost insane, impossible ways to play Highlander because they have really, really good reactions on top of good predictions. I'm the other way around. I have average reactions and really good predictions. That's the only th the only way I can make the, the hero work. And that comes from that comes from my time as a fencer, because that's what you have to do as a fencer, is you have to you have to play mind games in advance. You can't play it mix up to mix up, you have to play it three game three moves in advance to try to get somebody to do something. It's like a chess game where you have to play you have to play a couple moves ahead of the other person. That's the only reason I can predict certain things happening. It's the only reason I can make the character work for me at all. Don't strive to play like me. <laughs> it's not a good way to do it. And everything that I'm, everything further from this, uh, from this point on, is going to be very specific to people who predict and not react. As long as you're okay with that, this is like the rest of the video is more geared towards. Uh, my playstyle and playstyles like mine. So as far as predictions go, um, everything I do has a prediction quality to it. Every time I backstep light, it's in a direction I think an attack might come. It's the the danger of having that playstyle. Is that when you're wrong, you can be really, really wrong. Pr having a prediction-like playstyle is not terribly hard to get into. What you need to do is start really small. So even if you if you react to everything else and have okay reactions and not worrying about that, one way to really get into it and start like working that fence is to just do your backstep lights on prediction. Every time you do a backstep light, think of a direction that they might throw an attack. If they if you think like they, that Orochi might throw a zone, do a backstep light on your right guard. That's just a simple way to start doing that part. It also works if you think they're going to throw lights or heavies or anything like that. Just note that you're going to end up being wrong at some point. If you ever, if you choose to go with a predictions playstyle, you're gonna be wrong, and it's you're gonna get big damage done to you, and that's just like the course of it. It happens. Moving on from that, predictions also transfer over into offensive. With prediction stuff in offensive, and this applies, I think, to every every type of Highlander out there. You do have to read what you're, uh, what the person's going to do. So as a Highlander, you have a, an offensive mix-up to catch every single type of counter, except a roll. 
you need to be able to predict ahead and think, is this warden going to dodge bash? Are they going to wait for this? Are they going to wait for the, the maybe grab and try to counter me that way? Are they going to throw a light? Also possible. I think every Highlander has that sort of prediction level in them. Every good Highlander can predict what the other person is going to do when they're in their offensive stuff. It also helps when you have to predict uh, strong, like quicker attacks, like a very quick zone attack, for example. Just keep that in mind. The kind of Highlander I play, that it almost comes with the Musashi complex. You can be really, really good at it, or even like you can be pretty good at it. Trying to have people do what you do can get them killed. Be aware of that. That if you can't get predictions. If you can't get like the the consistent prediction senses down, then it's okay, and there are other people and other styles to learn when pl when playing as Highlander. The next part is Highlander kind of fits in his own tier list. I would always put Highlander in like C tier, where like he is average. He's not gr he's not super great, but he counters a lot. Of, he counters some people really hard, and he's really he can be really hard to fight against. But the truth of it is that Highlander kind of exists in his own list because of how polarizing he can be. I call this the gradient, kind of like how like, you have like color swatches at Home Depot and other uh, hardware stores for paint, where it goes from like one color gently into another color, and you have different shades. That's kind of how I have here. It goes, through, it goes from one through five, and I'm not going to explain each of these, but number one being Highlander has big advantage should never have a huge problem fighting those heroes. Number five being Highlander has disadvantage and should probably lose most of them if, he's, if he messes up even a little bit. You can beat, I, I want to be very clear on this, you can beat every hero on the roster with Highlander, it's just that some are it's like punching a wall. Some of these, like it's very average and it's just a normal interaction, not a huge deal. Some of them you'll just curb stomp them into the ground because of just how the matchup is. In some of these, you ideally should never win. And keep in mind, this is on the prediction playstyle. This, this is slightly different than if you asked um, Thunders or Vulture for theirs on how Highlander matches up with people. This is more how prediction gets you. This is the, the list that happens when you go with prediction playstyle. This is the, the gradient that happens when you go with prediction playstyle. In category one, we have Centurion. He's the only one in that one. I'll clarify that. There's two on here I'm gonna go over. Centurion doesn't really have anything to stop a Highlander from from doing Scottish things. It's just not, it's just a great, like kind of a, a weird situation. Not saying you can't beat a Highlander as a Centurion. It has been done, it will continue to be done. But it's a very hard uphill battle for that Centurion. Category two, we have Shigoki, Jeanhu, Shinobi, Yorm, Shaolin. From my experience, and in in this type of playstyle mentality, these heroes have disadvantage against Highlander, but it's not as severe as a Centurion. And number three, meaning the tier that they're, the Highlander is equal to, like they have normal interactions, they each can do something to mess with the other one, they each have strong mix-ups that counter the other one, but it's not polarizing. Uh, we have Warden, Hitakiri, Lawbringer, Aramusha, Warlord, and of course Highlander, because he can't have advantage over himself. Number four, the category where Highlander has a disadvantage, but it's not extreme. We have Kinsei, Nabushi, Conqueror, Orochi, Peacekeeper, Gladiator, Shaman, Raider, Nushi, and Valkyrie. That's a big list. <laughs> Highlander is not a great hero. Um, he does some crazy things. He can be hard to he can be hard to pin down. He can be hard to to break. But he still is not a great hero and has a lot of problems. And that's why that is a huge tier. Number five is Black Prior. Tiandi, Zhang Jun, and Berserker. Now, the only one I'm going to go over out of those is Black Briar because <laughs> fuck Black Briar. Black Briar has a lot of things that fuck with Highlander, and it doesn't only go with his bulwark and his undodgeables and his fast flow. It's not only that. The biggest thing is that a Black Briar, and this has happened to me, a Black Briar can just neutral bash. A Highlander can stay in his face in neutral bash, and the Highlander can do nothing to punish it. If you dodge and and try a GB, no dice, they can actually start up other attacks in them in that little window and continue hitting you. Even an offensive, if a Black Prior 
If a Black Prior neutral bashes you, it's not a guaranteed attack. The window for there is very slim. I would say 5 out of 10 times, the Black Prior can actually dodge out of the way of the, of the, of the dodge kick. And it's very frustrating, and it's annoying, and it's on top of the fact that half your offensive mix-ups don't work against him because if you try to do heavy into heavy into caber toss, which should catch somebody who dodges, they can dodge and then bulwark your caber toss. If they dodge early on your kick, they can bulwark your caber toss. Uh, they have really good hitboxes on their lights, which are quick. You know, they're 5 mess. An offensive dodging the zone is risky. You basically have to dodge the zone and come out of offensive to try to do anything because there's really no reason to be an offensive when they throw a zone. Because if you dodge that and try to go for a kick, they could throw a light and just hit you out of it. If you predict the light and guess right, they can flash into Bulwark and flip you. If you guess wrong and you go to dodge the light and it's a and it's an undodgeable heavy, that sucks. There's no, no getting out of that one. So it's just a really difficult hero for, for Highlander to punish. Overall, it's just not a good matchup and it's very polarized against Highlander. I hope that this has been really useful for for anybody. Everyone, every Highlander plays a little bit different. Some play really, really different to each other. So if this hasn't been your cup of tea, or this ends up not working for you, check out other Highlanders because there's a bunch of ways to learn different styles. There's a bunch of responses for the same question. Much love. Guard out. Hey everyone, thank you for watching. I invite you to join my Discord, links in the description. If you want to help support the channel, donation and Patreon links are down below. Much love, guard out.